holler and a holler back. Holler back. Joey Hollenbeck. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of Full Buddy Cast Presents Holler with Hollenbeck. Let's go. We got Joey Hollenbeck on the mic, dude. We are rolling right now. I'm right now. I'm probably editing uh, in in the hotel room, staring out the suite. I got a suite. Ooh, where are you saying? Flamingo. Oh, dude, you know what? I've gotten Con Expo a couple years ago. Well, shit, probably four years ago now. I had a suite at the Flamingo. Really? Yeah. We had a suite at the Flamingo. Nice two bedroom. Yes. Kitchen. Big yes. spread in the middle. That's what we Bedrooms got. Bedrooms are on opposite sides. Yes. Two one, queens, yep, one king. Yep. I wonder if it's the same room. Dude. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. I wonder if it's the same room. Could have could have been. <laughs> we taking a black light to that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> Don't worry about that, buddy. Uh, so anyway, so when we booked this thing, we were booking it. I think I, I probably already shared it. Sunday Night Football. Did I tell you about this already? Uh-uh. Raiders are playing Sunday Night Football oh, yeah. as we're flying in, right? Yeah. And so we were able to, to like, I once, once the Raiders said, the owner said, hey, we're not going to have any crowd in this place. Before that, dude, the prices were so expensive to even – even go to the place where you're probably going to get robbed uh, and stay there. Someone's going to break into your room. It was circus, like circus. It, was, it was no even like off the strip. It was expensive okay. because they're going to have Sunday night football on that on that day. Well, here we go. They they say one Monday night football game. I listened and you know they, they, it was actually the Raiders. Oh, they're not going to have even if COVID lifts tomorrow. They're not going to do anything. Uh, they're they're not going to have any crowd at all. As soon as they said that, the next day I checked online and all the prices dropped. So at this point, I have this credit. What I was already going to spend on this Podunk Hampton Inn area. And so what I did was I just took that money, canceled out that. It took about an hour and two hours on the phone, but it was well worth it. Got to the Flamingo. We got a suite. And uh, we now have, because it, it, we got a suite, limo service, comp limo service from the yeah. airport. Oh yeah, and back. Oh yeah, looking forward to it, man. Oh yeah. So Jamie's fortieth, my fifth year at wedding anniversary. Time has flown by, bringing the whole family, loving it, enjoying life. I like your style. Yeah, just bringing a thousand dollars in ones. Probably making it rain. Making it rain. I like that, dude. You better go. We can throw on like a bow tie or something. Maybe wear your work polo. <sighs> work <sighs> with suspenders. <laughs> I uh, and some spanks. I. <laughs> To my nipples, <laughs> just just syringe and wrap me up. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't know uh, what I'm gonna wear. That's a good idea, though. I think I think I, I think you I should dress probably... up. You get a limo picked up. People will be like, "Whoa, what are these guys?" Yeah, whole family getting picked up by the flamingo. I might just guy? everyone might be wearing full buddy cast shirts, and they're like, "What's full buddy cast?" There you go, bro. And then like, oh, no, you're talking. There we go. Um, Wish we had some Holland with Hollenbeck t-shirts that they could wear. Okay, so if we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk after this. No bullshit. <laughs> you say that for the last nineteen podcasts we've had. So we guys, we will have Holland with Hollenbeck gear at some point, and I think I know how. As I was splitting wood today, I was figuring where you know if I were to be able to use a large space to park a certain sub thing. That might generate a revenue where we could then purchase some things to then sell, um, and maybe we'll do that this t- this this uh, this time around. Okay, that's why the wood cutting is going so swiftly. <laughs> <laughs> just we are Santa's elves, just out there, just me and the kids. Come on, kids! <laughs> Come on, kids! You don't even know. Um, but yes, maybe. <laughs> But yeah, but anyway, so uh, yeah, so looking forward to Vegas. If that's the case, and you're looking for a Hollenbeck Holland with Hollenbeck t shirt, order one size bigger because we're getting the cheap ones. Okay, (laughs) see, now all of a sudden, where we get the nice dry fit? Who knows? Uh, Dry fit, yeah, like the like the something with the little stretch in it, like that makes it look makes these things like that monstrous, dude. You guns. Not really. Not yet. Okay, one, coming, of, eh? one of these days. After Vegas. One of these days. Hey, were you a big WWF fan, WWE fan back yes, in the day? Yes. Can we call it WWF? 
I know it's the World yes. Wildlife Federation and, and WWF. That's what we grew up on. That's what we grew up on. Yeah. The WWE. Eh. Yeah. How about WWF? Yeah. Okay. I want you, because we did this with Craig and Corey. I want you. Go on. Bentley. Check out the fantasy football thing that we got going on every Sunday morning, by the way. Uh, but I want you to give me your top four. The okay. four horsemen. Okay. WWF? WWF. We can pull in, like, the transition of WWE. Because there's going to be a... NWA. What was that? NWA or N- NWO. NWO. WCW versus NWO. Great, great Super Nintendo... Or great uh, Nintendo 64 game, by the oh, way. I don't play video games. We're going... All um, right. So, I'm going to go my top four. What? You're asking me the question. And then you give your top four, too. That's what I'm saying. Like, So, we're going to see... Perhaps I do my top four first. Go for it. Who's your number one? Are we going four to we go four to one, or do we want to go one to four? One to four. Okay. Who's your Who's your top WWF guy? This is why I already have mine. I could go Ultimate Warrior. It. Number one. Yeah, I legit. Now are you doing Ultimate Warrior slash Sting, or Ultimate Warrior? Actually, I'm going Road Warriors. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are legit. We got. You are we to, doing tag team duos right now? I'm going road warriors. All right, fine. Then I'm throwing bushwhack the bushwhack boys uh, with, with them too. Just coming out. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's <laughs> from Selig. <laughs> I'll tell you this. I will. Okay, here's a Selig story because it's it's legit. Uh, these guys that lived across the street. I'm on my bike out in Selig on my nice little pedal bike that I'm riding around with my buddies. Where I'm probably like 12, banana 13. Seat? Banana seat? No banana seat. No. So we're riding around. This one drunk dude just hammered Wait, dude. Wait, sell like a drunk guy? Yeah, it's crazy. What? Walked across my neighbor's yard. I'm with the neighbor's son, my age, you know, a couple years older. And he's flipping us off. And he's heading to his – he's actually – I'm like next to this dude. You know, they live ne- – he lives next to me on the other side. Wait, real quick. Not to cut you off. Tell me your demeanor when you see somebody flipping you off in a yard when you're a kid on a 10-speed. I don't care. You're cool with it? Are you like, whoa, what's this guy doing? Are you like, hey, I don't, suck it. I don't care. I don't, yeah, this, he's drunk. I don't care. What am I going to do? He was an adult? He was the one that yelled, Rick. Rick. He was an That's adult. That's the same dude. Yeah, oh, adult. So you're terrified. So he's drunk. He's, oh, he's drunk. So you're terrified. And he's, flip, he's flipping us off. And he goes, sign language. Sign language. You guys read sign language. We've done nothing to provoke this guy. We're just there. Yeah. So my. He's just out of like Carlos Rossi right now and he's pissed. My neighbor. Boy, the guy, the guy, the kid, my, age, he says, my dad hates this guy and he just wants to, get, he, he cut across my property and he flipped us off. I'm going to go tell my dad. He pedal biked, you know, to his house, like, no, like, like so fast. Like it was, it was, it was like, bam, bam, bam. Like all of this start, this guy wasn't even walked back all the way to, uh, to the other side of my property where he lived at. So the son goes into that neighbor boy, goes into the house. Trailer. Next thing you know. Trailer. House. Oh, okay. Probably built in 1910. Okay. Like it was like falling apart. You put your foot through. Like okay. Yeah. So next thing I know, it's his dad and his buddy, shaved heads, look just like the bush boy, and they are literally running, like walking, stomping <laughs> out of their of, of the front door, down the front porch, just just elbows high, just doing the the, the bushwhacker ready to throw. And they go beat down? the shit out Wait, of that guy. Like full blown, like fist. Full like, blown. No talking, no nothing. Just rolled him. Just, hey, mother. Ran over there and just stomped, beat the piss out of him. I've never seen someone get the piss beat out of them. Oh, and I don't like to see that. And I have a dirt road that goes downhill. It's perfect for sledding back in the day. But they literally rolled him down the dirt road like he was a cartoon character. And then they stomped back into their houses and went back in. Thing maybe took forty five seconds. Back to the old crow whiskey. <laughs> We're still <laughs> sitting there on the pedal bikes, just like what just happened. That was it. Forty five seconds. It was the fastest thing I've ever. It was like a. They just left him at the bottom of the hill. Yes, I didn't know. I'm just sitting there. So I'm just sitting there. Literally five minutes later, this guy is dragging himself up the hill, and. He's got his cars parked all over, you know, because you yeah. need to have HOA. Selleck says you need to have at least six cars that don't work sitting your <laughs> sitting your yard, and <laughs> a couple rust buckets. <laughs> so he takes his jacket that's been ripped off his body, probably ripped too, 
and he's just his face is just completely bloody and uh he just takes his jacket and just slams the hood of his one of his trucks and uh and then meanders into his trailer damn he's seen some shit yeah yeah Whoa. yeah you didn't want to be a ufc fighter <laughs> <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude i just i just survived it was just i yeah. and not even to survive in a way i thought if i could be funny i could get people to like me bro you came out of the hood and made a name for yourself thanks bro knuckles i did it i nice did work, it dude yeah i did that's it. crazy yeah. i never liked to see stuff like that as a kid i like now as as i got older and like yeah Came into my own. I don't necessarily like, necessarily like to see stuff like that, but like I'm not like scared of it. But as a kid, that's scary, dude. How old were you? Uh, f- I want to say like 12, 13. Yeah. To see like grown men like throw, yeah, is scary. Yeah, like as a kid, yeah, you know what I mean. It is. It, it, it like it, super scary. Yeah, no, it's it's traumatizing, possibly. Trauma. I wouldn't say scary. Right. It's intense. You don't expect it. You expect kids to fight. You don't expect adults to fight. Have you ever been in a fight? Uh, I, I haven't been in like a huge fight, you know, but like a push, like whatever, like a punch. Yeah. Fight. Okay. Yeah. So like, I was, you ever been punched in the face? You ever thrown a punch and hit somebody? In the oh face yeah. Or? I've been punched in the face yeah. several times. I got, pun- I got bird knocked in the back of the head. Dude, the cell, you, th- you want to talk about the cell, the cell bus ride home <laughs> is like, you might as well be in a penitentiary bus, like get, like prisoners getting shipped from from <laughs> That's prison. That's a long drive, too, dude. An hour long people every get, day. People get bored. Pe- people get bored, and and that could go one of two ways. One time, I lipped off to this guy who just got back from juvie. Oh, you told this, me that one. Yeah. So my buddy, my neighbor, brought me over gun. a gun and hid in the bushes, thinking this guy's gonna come over and shoot me. You guys are hard out there, dude. <laughs> I didn't think anything of it. Hard. Dude, yeah, we we used to have, uh, but you come up with little stupid things. You're still kids, so you like what we do. I, in, in as this a kid, cl- I never show. None of my boys ever had my back with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's some shit. Right it's, I mean, Selick was just a normal place. I you, when you grow up in an area, you just think this is just how it is. You got no, some yeah. weirdos. You got some meth no, addicts. I know it is. I get it. Yeah. You think how it is? So it's all over them. So I, I had to be yeah. funny. I felt okay. I got to be funny. To get people to like me, so they don't kick the crap out of me. Yeah, that's what I got to do. And then also respect people. I learned that there's. I mean, I'm not. I know I'm not top dog. To sit in the back, dude. This is how it was with <laughs> with the Selig bus. The back seat was always reserved for the top dogs. Always. And it was like the big dudes. I'm talking like I. I don't want to say the last names because I don't know, but but these guys were ripped. <laughs> body just like in elementary school well no i'm These talking about guys weren't jacked I'm, t- I'm talking even high school junior high high school okay and they would sit in the back the wrestlers i know who you're talking about big dudes yeah. and uh every once in a while they do the whole like I'd, I'd be like maybe second to the back third to the back oh you were that far back i was i was at status dude i was one of the cool guys people want to laugh yeah people want to laugh right i'm the i'm the court jester i get that. every once in a while i'd get the whole like the like the finger like oh come here step to the table and then exactly and Uh-oh. then and then they'd swing their legs around let you in let me in oh snap I, dude I gotta sit in the back and at that point when I sat in the back all those other mother truckers that I, I could not stand I was mouthing off to all of them man tell you got to step off the bus and lose your boy <laughs> that's and then the, what? that's when the guns get hidden in the freaking bushes oh boy yeah yeah oh, so. Boy. I you know I'm telling you when, once you it's it's the same but it's now it's the same thing it's the same thing now when you're when you're even I could, I I correlate that with anything even fantasy football fantasy football you're kind of like hanging out you're like hey this is fun guys right you get five wins underneath your belt and it's like six games then you're just talking shit man you're, What's up, you're, bitch? <laughs> yeah, you you feel great at that point you're changing your team name you're talking trash across the aisle to the other person I mean like you're you're going ham. I don't really do that. I just kind of stay even keel. Do you talk trash ever? No. Like, I mean, I know with your boys, you might do a little something here or there. Yeah, like jokingly having fun, but I don't like, what do you mean talk trash? Well, I mean, just anything. Like, when you went into a game, mm-hmm. were you talking trash from, from no. like, play one, Mm-mm. play 50? Did you start tra- talking trash? When Depends you were on up the situation three was. scoreboard? Depends you know. on what the situation was. I never talked a lot of smack. Until, like, 
here's the difference. Like if as an offensive lineman, yeah, you got a guy in front of you been battling with all day, and you nobody's talking smack like whatever. He might talk a little bit, and you just continue to own him or do what you're doing, right? Like playing your game. Um, and then when it comes to a crucial, and it's like third and three, and you then you walk up to the line, you're like, hey, bitch. <laughs> But are they They're talking? Like, what? Are They're like, hey, bitch, I'm going to be real with you right now. This ball is coming right over the top of you. I'm so just giving you a heads up. So and then they're all antsy. So and they're this Guesser would hit them with the, ha! and they're boom, right into me. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, that was the next play. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> oh, is that a first down? Okay. The worst, I started getting cocky a little bit when I was my senior year when we were rolling. We went like 10 and 2 that year. We were like nationally ranked, like we were. We had some swag about us, yeah. And it wasn't like that's gonna feel good. It does, dude. Yeah. Like not talk shit swag, but just like we were good, like really good, yeah, a threat to anybody, right? right? And uh, we were playing Arizona State, and it was a huge thing. Like this D lineman guy was supposed to be the man in front of me, and I think he called me like. Um, Oh, he's just another pawn in my chess game. And when they interviewed him about me, and I was like, I'm going to bury this. Dude. <laughs> and so, so we did. And I did. I did work this guy the whole time. And we're all the way down to like the five or six yard line is a controversial call, this and that. And uh, this dude's in my face. I push him. Like we start going off. It's on live TV. Like, uh, they cut to commercial. The Whoa. fans start throwing tortillas on the field, and they're throwing water bottles from the third floor. With the caps on? Yeah, because that's oh. when Arizona Cardinals yeah. and Arizona State played in the same. Oh. So there was like big-ass stadium. So yeah. they're third, 300 level, we're getting water bottles. It's raining water bottles full. Wearing helmets. Coach Everyone's Price wearing helmets. Like, everybody's wearing helmets on the field. They like got like equipment guys around them holding pads like over their heads. Like, right. That's a that's a that hurts to get hit in the head with a full water bottle from three hundred. Did anyone get hit in the head though? No, but they were dropping like right next to everybody. <laughs> <And> they're like <laughs> helmets on. <laughs> the next week, and then the, that was like a Saturday Sunday uh, game happened, and they were throwing water bottles on the field too. Then, and then, and then in all arenas, football, whatever, they started make giving you oh, water caps. with the caps off. Wow, you guys, it was you guys were the first team to get. It, or were they doing yeah, that all no. season? No, we were the first team that was getting <laughs> water bottles dropped on us. But we won. But that was a uh, – yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. Like just right there in the end zone, nose to nose of this dude. And he did something. I pushed him. Flags and this and that. And then I started talking shit. And then he ended up getting the penalty and I didn't. Oh. And it was and it was great. And But it was, it was super like uh, – it was intense. Fun though. Does it ever cool down? Like it's like a couple plays later, do you start dapping up? All right, hey, that was you know, or do you play hard and play hard and do avoid him after the game and like I don't think like my whole mentality was, and we've talked about this. I just don't. I I have respect for the guy I'm playing against. Yeah, but like yeah, I don't care if I rip your spleen out. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was just like my mentality. Well, let's talk. Let's talk real quick about. Uh, we're not going to get to the – I know we teased with the question. We're not going to talk about it that yet, so you guys got to hang on for a little bit. But um, when it when it talks about playing those home games, uh, one, one guy I was listening to, he was talking about how he didn't like playing home games because it caused more stress for him because his family's there and his girlfriend's there and some girl he made out with the week before is there and his bully's there. Like everyone's there watching you. But when you go to a new city, yeah. you don't have to deal with all that crap. Uh, what's going on in your brain when you're playing in the home? I know the crowd, the crowd's involved, but were you that rabbit holeish where you're no. thinking about who's who else is here? My professor's here, you know, like not at all. I didn't start get. I got. I was like that in 
probably my last senior game I played in. But like, oh, well, let me answer the question. Home game wise, yeah, right? Yeah, I love playing at home because I figured that you're not right. traveling, right? You way less stress. Right after the game, you're walking, you're showering, you're walking out, you're greeting people, you're talking to people, you're going to your favorite bar right afterwards, you're going home, you're sleeping in your own bed, you're not getting home at four in the morning, you're not like whatever, you know. And right. So it was great. Like I love playing home games, and you got your home crowd. Like right, you know? right, right. You feel like everybody's got your back. You run out of time, you know. I mean, it's a whole different animal than it is going on the road, like. I get what he's saying, though, and what you're saying is I felt like when it was all on the line for me, like maybe my last game I played in, the Sun Bowl game in college in El Paso against Purdue, like I didn't – I knew there was a ton of scouts there, like looking at – like I had been interviewed prior. I had had um, different tests done on me by, you know, like – different things and so you know that they're watching and that's what was hard for me because you don't want to f up and then when you f up it's like a snowball effect you know not to say i didn't play a good game but there's different there's things i could have done better different you know in my own critique anyways but it ended up working out for me but still i mean that's what would throw me off is like knowing that you got big eyes on you which even though you you may think that people are watching tv like, what's the difference between someone TV, being like, in the crowd and then also knowing it's on TV? The only other game I think that I was like, the that game that I just told you about, and then probably the first game I started in as a true freshman, and the the hype behind it because I was a first true freshman to start since like the seventies, and all this other stuff that happened. And it was a nationally televised game on ABC in Berkeley in Cal. And so that game, and I was on D-line then. And so that game was um, the emotion of it. And the, you the people the, that are talking yeah. about it are the people that, the people are mentioning your name right. on ABC are the yeah. same dudes that you'd watch on Saturday morning. That's what I'm saying. Announcing a game you'd be that sitting was on the, whatever. You'd you know? sit on the floor watching these games yeah. and, and seeing the, the pregame and the little interviews and this and yeah. that. And, oh, this, we've got this Joey Hall back over here. He, you know, this is coming from me to Washington. Yeah. Da, da, da. It's like, that's crazy. To right. Yeah. And so that was uh, different for me. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was something that, that was a whole different arena that I'd ever been in at that point. Not to say I hadn't played in games prior to that at that college level, yeah. but not on ABC right. at the time, not on nationally televised game. Like you turn on you, – you go and turn on the TV anywhere on a Saturday, you're going to have nationally televised games. Like you could be watching Texas and whatever, you know, yeah. or whatever that looks like. And to have like a nationally televised game on a major heavy hitting like Channel 4 or 5 or whatever that was. Right. So then – It's different, dude. So let me ask you this then. Uh, Brian Scalabrini, mm-hmm. Casey Kane, Ryan yeah. McDade, Dave Pfeiffer, all these guys uh, have gone out and represented Enumclaw, Washington yeah. from where, where where they've come from. You. Yeah. Is that ever in your mind that you're like, I'm representing Enumclaw? Or is it just like you never think about that? Because they always seem to – there's always that graphic from Enumclaw, Washington. Blah, blah, blah. Like do you even think about that when you're playing? You know what? I think about – Obviously, I'd lo- I love this town. I'd love to do it proud and like whatever, you know. Right. But I don't necessarily – you don't know what they're saying about you until you watch it the next day. Sure. Like, you don't know. Like sure. you're out there doing what you. And so I don't think that it's ever out of my mind. Like, of course, I want to do the town well. But like at the same time, I I mean, I'm trying to do me. Yeah. You know? You're representing Joey Hollenbeck uh, uh, yeah. more than you're, jo- you're, you're yeah, representing. Yeah, yeah. But it's great to like have – that small town behind you, you know, that feeling, knowing that people are watching and knowing, you know, for sure. So, uh, sounds like do you did you ever feel like you're representing the Cougars? Do you ever feel like you're representing representing like where you're currently at more than where you're from, kind of a thing? No, I think that I and and, and my, well, that's here's the next thing. Like, I didn't like. I still talk to people to this day that have no idea that I played in the NFL. Like, it, and, that, and I'm cool with that. Like, I yeah. don't – it doesn't bother me. It doesn't, I don't care. Like, yeah. it's 
It is what it is. Is that when you pull out the NFL PA card? Like, well, where do you think I got this thing from? Want eBay? To, want to go to Coyote Heaven? <laughs> want, want to be in the fifth in line? <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I might actually take that from you. Where is it? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Representing the Cougs. Like, like, like oh, no. Where I you're think... currently playing, you know. The thing about that is if you're on a team and there's any other Coug on that team, whether it's are ten, you like linked up like whether bros? it's like ten years older, or ten years younger, like whatever that looks like, yeah, like your boys, like instantly under your wing. Like when I was in Buffalo, not another Coug on the team. Bledsoe came in from uh New England. Yeah. And when he came there, I was with the Bills. And so instantly he was like, What's we're, up? We're like, home. Yeah, we're boys. And like yeah. when the whole price thing unfolded. I got there early in the morning to get my workout in. He was there. He's like, hey, I need to talk to you. We sat down, cut it up. He's like, I talked to Coach Price. I talked to this and that when that whole Alabama scandal and all that yeah. stuff came out. And he's like, you know, gave me the rundown on it. He's like, just so you know, this is the true story. This is what happened. This isn't what happened. So wait, Drew Bledsoe, yeah. kind of cool. Great guy. Yeah. Right? I know we've talked in the past. You said you never got like the, uh, you never were star, like, what's that called? Where you get like, uh, like. What happens when you get like blinded? Is it star? Is it starstruck? Starstruck. There we go. Were you starstruck just a little bit with no, Drew Bledsoe? I no. And you know what? And maybe uh, I was just having a conversation just a couple of days ago with somebody, and um, I was just talking about. It. I was like, you know what's funny to me is like people lose their shit over like athletes or over like. Uh, musician or like actor, whatever that yeah, is yeah, actor right, right, whatever right. and like like people like literally like lose it and i'm like i don't understand that like to me i just i don't really understand that like i just don't it's and maybe it's because, i got a story for you by the way keep going <laughs> yeah, keep but going. it's like i bet you that people lose their shit over the real housewives of orange <laughs> county or whatever that looks like because they're on tv like put a construction worker on tv Every well, deadliest catch, for instance, yeah. people lose their oh, shit yeah. when they see oh, these they guys. See the time these are band blue collar that. dudes that are doing their job, and right. there's a TV crew around. Well, it's because and it's the, similar to the NFL, it's similar right. to baseball, it's similar to anything that's on TV because people can watch it. It's entertaining to them, and they can relate to these. They people get a connect, to an extent. And, and there's a little bit of connection, right. and they've seen them excel. But starstruck for me? No, I mean, I, I don't, I, I, I don't know if I ever have. Like, I, as a kid, I met Marcus Allen, I met Steve Largen, I met all these guys. You get, and you had John Elway rolling. I John Elway's rolling. rolling. John Elway and I are boys. Some horse teeth. We're John. boys. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but horse teeth to think. <laughs> but on, on yeah. a serious note, like he's a great guy. Like, yeah. I think if I really needed something, I could reach out to him, and he would know who I am, and we could talk. Like oh, he always will remember who you are. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Like there, I just don't. I don't. Yeah, let me. I just don't get starstruck like that. Well, let me. Do you? Of course, I do. I do. I do. I get. I get starstruck even with people that I know. Like I'm like, dude, I can't believe. Not with you ever, but with other people. <laughs> where, where, where I'm like, Thank you. I can't believe. Like I know this guy. Like I can't. I can't believe we're friends. I remember. I had a. Uh, you know, good friend that I was just like, dude, this guy is like my friend. He's going big. But listen to this. Who are you talking about in particular? I can't mention names. <laughs> so uh, I feel like you did last week. No, not anymore. We're back. <laughs> so Mark Martinez. <laughs> um, so uh, I have to take my my car. I, I don't know if you realize I got a new car now. I don't. I have the yellow car still, but I don't have the red car anymore. I saw some silver yeah. one out there. Took, took it to the shop. They're cool. like, hey, you got this. The, okay, well, we're just going to trade it in. So I go to my boys, Gamblin's, Tyson's. I go to Tyson's and I go show up to this uh, this lot. Everyone's wearing a mask. I'm wearing a mask. The 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 salespeople are wearing a mask. So I, I roll up. And I see my boy Andrew gambling there, and he's he's there, got his got his mask on, he's helping Good people. Good dude. If you guys need a car, go see Andrew. Great, great guy. Well, I get kind of like I want to talk to Andrew. I know Andrew. I played video games with Andrew. I've hung out with Andrew, and but I didn't know he, he didn't know I was showing up. So I said, well, "I'll wait for Andrew," because this guy just kind of swoops in. He's like, you know, another dealer there, and he's a salesman there. He's like, "Hey." Uh, what you looking for? What you looking for today? I'm waiting for Andrew. He goes, can I get your name? 
Uh, I'll tell him. You can tell he's a little disappointed because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, obviously I'm I'm looking for a car. I'll wait for Andrew. Well, I'll tell him that 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 that, that you're waiting for him. Can I get your name? I go, yeah, yeah, it's Travis. And he goes, Travis what? And I go, Travis Kenny. He goes, Travis Kenny? Enum Clock Community Discussion Board Gazette? Oh, I'm, snaps, bro. He knew me. I'm like, dude, I'm like, yeah. did you sign his tip or anything? <laughs> <laughs> Take like, your shirt off, bro, and sign your nipple. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you know, at this point, just because of the recognition, I said, I'll deal with you. Forget Andrew. I'm dealing with you. And he goes, well, I gotta, I gotta ask Andrew. I gotta make sure. So he goes and asks Andrew. Andrew says, sure. So this guy, Patrick Kelly, great guy, but he got the sale from just recognizing me. So we obviously get a car and this and that. But uh, wow, did you work him or did he work you? Uh, well, obviously, sounds like you worked you a little I, bit. I know. Ty, hey, I felt, I felt like the red carpet was was being rolled out for me at that point. Oh, nice little gambling water bottle, oh, yeah. maybe some. <laughs> Some popcorn, dude. It was it. It felt good. Took you over to the truck, the truck area. <laughs> he's like, and he's can... like, you want car washes for life? Here you go. But uh, two a week. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it's two a week. Not mine. <laughs> I go every day if I want. You're so cool. <laughs> I'll pay for it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, I got I got I I was taken care of with Tyson. Go. In fact, if you guys are looking for a car, this is not a sponsored podcast, but. Just blow their minds and just say, "Hey, Travis Kenny from Full Buddy Cast, or or Joey Hollenbeck, uh, or even like uh, Edom Claw Discussion Board." But yeah, I'm a well known guy, Joey. So so you don't gotta tell me. So fr- so friggin' uh, you don't gotta tell me. Just, ch- just chill, just chill on it. People get starstruck around me I a little bit. That. I get that. I don't get starstruck, but I do around you. <laughs> it's okay. It's 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 happened. Yeah. It's it's happened. Hey, all right. Let's just jump into one. I got two questions. I got two dying football questions for you. Okay. Why are they dying? Because I I want to get inside that head, okay. and I get new questions that pop up. And I'm like, ooh, I gotta ask Joey. Go. Ooh, I gotta ask Joey. Shoot. New city feel. So when you sign with the new city, uh, it sucks. Is it? Yeah. Is it not just the moving aspect and getting set, but are you solely fo- focused on football? Or are you like, oh, cool, I want to check out the attractions. I want to go over here. I hear this place is a, this is known for its good, this type of dish. And, like, are you enjoying that new city? Or are you like, I'm here to work. I'm focused yeah. on football. I, you know, I think a little of both. But the majority of it is your focus on football. But if you're not comfortable where you're at, right, you don't know your – head from your ass like when you show up in a new city <laughs> right like you don't know what's what you don't know what roads are what you don't know anything right a little easier now with like your smartphone and your gps and like okay i need to go here or what's a good restaurant you just type in restaurants near me and it pops up like i didn't have all that when i, I had a flip phone you know what i'm saying when i was playing so it was different like you were like atlas in your rental car or like whatever you know what i mean like trying to look and look at roads just, just the dome lights like, <laughs> yeah. where are we in the shit <laughs> um, but you got to know where you're at to feel comfortable like you know if you don't know where he any like st louis for me was tough because didn't know a lot didn't know anything didn't know anything about st louis didn't know shit when i got there and like the player personnel guys like Buddy, you got to go over here. They'll cook you a 24 egg omelet. And I'm like, I don't need a 30 egg omelet. I just, dude, I'm trying to. Excuse my Gatorade. Good breakfast place or like whatever, you know? And like, you check those things out and do some other things. But for the most part, like, I think it's probably different for guys who just signed a $20 million guaranteed contract. They're probably a little more like, let's check out the facility. Yeah. Let me buy a home. Let me get learn the city. What's Figure good out places? Where's a good school yeah. for the kids? Like whatever that looks like. Not when you're grinding and trying to make a squad. You know what I mean? And so right. it's, you get thrown in the mix. So a blessing for me was when I came to Seattle, like I knew everything. So that aspect of it was out of it. Buffalo was crazy too, but Buffalo's Buffalo to me is like, Almost like Enum Claw with like a big city real close, like uh, closer than Seattle, anyways, right? You know, so you're just outside of it in Orchard Park, and you're like there, and it's bars and restaurants and the stadium yeah. and the facility and houses and stuff around <laughs> it. So it's cool, but like obviously the city of Buffalo isn't far from there, but you're kind of in the 
burbs a little bit, you know, so you're outside of it. And that was, that wasn't a hard transition, but like St. Louis dude was wild. And then you get to Seattle and I knew everything I knew. I, I was very familiar with it. So that was, that took that whole aspect out of it. I think that's probably why I excelled in Seattle a little more than I did anywhere else. So what keeps people in the Pacific Northwest? Cause I feel like there's people that will like look at all sorts of sports. Look at Sean camp, even right. from, from uh, Elkhart, Indiana got, got traded to Cleveland Cavaliers. He, he has a home here in Seattle. Have like, you ever been that, to Cleveland? No, no. That's have you ever been to Indiana? That's what I'm wondering. Like even like it, are that's peop- the thing, dude. Do people like, like you look at everybody that I can think of? It's that very simple. I'll have to explain it to you right now. I'm listening. I know your question. I've lived all. So over what the, do you think? <laughs> I've lived all over the country. I've lived all over the world. Every single time I come back to the Pacific Northwest, when you clear my air and like you start looking, like it legit is probably the most beautiful place that I've like easily says. I'm not talking Fiji. I'm not talking right, right, right. exotic places, right. but like a normal place to go. The Pacific Northwest is beautiful, dude. Like Denver is just Rocky Mountains, cool, but like. Not the evergreens, not the greenness, not like the water, not the mountains, not like there's a beautiful. lot going on in Washington. A lot, and it's beautiful. East I'm, side too. Well, I'm telling you, it's yeah, probably one of the most beautiful places in the country. Period, for sure. And so a lot of people don't, and it's probably because of the rain, right? Right. And whatever else, but it's green, it's lush, it's booming, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah. So that's what it is, because it, it feels like, and then. I also feel like the fans, obviously we know the 12s, but even before the 12s, it's like we, maybe because we don't have a lot going on over here when it comes to sports and this and that. So when we have a basketball team, we friggin' love our basketball team. Sure. Mariners, I think we still sell out Mariner games that are, are fill them up even when they got losing records. How like, many games do they play a year? Like, uh, I don't know, 130. Yeah, something like that. But they win like nine. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, but we still we don't pack it out. I mean, you're still not gonna but like we make it a big deal to go to you're going to a Mariners. I'm going to a Mariners game today. I got Mariner tickets. Yeah. It's like, okay, cool. You know you're gonna hit up the the freaking beer the uh guard spot. Yeah, you're gonna do the pyramid across the street, even though right. went out of business. Um okay, it did. COVID. Yeah, it took it out. Weird. Um, but uh who knows? Maybe someone will buy it and keep it going. But anyway. Should we start it? Should we buy it? Start a little something. Let's do it. Oh man, that's a primo spot. Why would they think somebody's gonna buy it, dude? It's, well, if someone's gonna buy it, but it's that probably place is packed out. It's packed out, but not when no one's there. It's it's probably like pro, it's probably expensive as heck to. Oh, yeah, it's a to, primo spot, and it's in Seattle. Ugh. 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 Seattle, man. Yeah. Seattle's crazy. Yeah. But anyway, okay. So here we go. Momentum. Okay. Talk about momentum. We talked about this in the last podcast. Talk about this podcast. Okay. So the series, you just create a turnover. You're on defense. Mm-hmm. You think we may be back out on the field in five minutes. What are you doing during that time? For that, fi- Are you sitting on a bench? Are you getting yourself something to drink? Are you standing on the sideline watching the game? What are you doing? On a normal series, on a normal series, defense wise, when you because you played both defense right. and offense, so defense, what are you doing? So on a long drive like that, usually after you come off on a series, yeah, the guys that were just on the field will sit down on the bench, yeah, grab you some water, whatever. Coach will come over and say, "Hey, what are you seeing? This is what I'm seeing. Let's make an adjustment here. Let's make an adjustment there." The rest of the guys, your backups, whatever, will be around, so they're on the same page too, and then. Usually after that little meeting time's over, I would usually stand up and go watch the game and be ready for what happens. So occasionally you'll have either a quick series. We like the first play, you fumble, throw right. a throw an interception, quick boom. Turnover. You, you, yeah. So you don't really get to talk about the adjustments th- right. at that point a little bit. Um, but for the long series, where out of nowhere it's just like. You're getting first downs, but it's taking you three downs to get the first down. Yeah. And you're, you're milk and clock. And, and it could be – even in the first quarter, I've seen first quarters just fly by because the clock's running the whole time because no one's going out of bounds. There's no incompletions. And it's just like run, run, pass. 
right. three yards at a time, so it to takes speak. Takes forever. What do you do during that? Trying to are you get? I mean, I know there's exercise bikes, but is there anything where you're trying to like not tighten up? Yeah, you just gotta stay loose. Like that's why I wouldn't sit for very long. A lot of those benches now are like heated. Yeah, so they're keeping you warm as you sit there. But I'd always like do like a sumo squat where it's like you just squat down and like just keep your hips loose, like maybe some high knees, a couple pass sets out of your stance. Like, dude, you gotta also understand that like. One series on the field, like you can wring out your shirt. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's that much sweat. Like yeah. you're warm, you're ready to go. So to tighten up, you got to be sitting for quite a while. You know, and, and I feel like as a professional athlete and someone that's doing this even uh, at a high level, you have got to be super in tune with your body. Like you've got to know my body. You know, like I know it. If I'm resting my legs for two minutes standing, I need to do a sumo squat. I need right. – like like you probably can st- – know more than someone who's just playing a pickup game. Right. You know. Is that true? For sure. You know like, okay, I got to get this leg kind of – Yeah, this, let's yeah. loosen up a little yeah. bit. Like I've been standing here. Like I, I'm not just going to go out there and sprint right now. You know I mean? It's, right. You just got to stay loose. You got to stay warm. You got to stay loose. And But it's pretty hard-pressed to be on the sidelines longer than – it happens. Yeah, it but, does but, happen, but not but often. Not often, right, right? right? So it's few and far between where you're. Do you in a lose situation to momentum where during that at all? I don't think so because now you're feeding off your offense. Okay, all right, right. So your momentum's still rolling, like from a team perspective. Like you've seen games before. You've seen games before where teams just start rolling and right. getting momentum, and they're going, and like the other team can't stop it. Like it's just like that. You feed off each other, and you just keep rolling, and nobody can stop you, and it's. There's no rhyme or reason for it. It's just you're rolling. Do you want – so with if you're rolling, usually it's bang, bang plays too. So, sure. boom, you guys pick them off. Well, everything's And on the 20-yard line, then they score – and then your offense scores immediately, and then you're back on the field. Do you right. want a breather or do you want to be back on that field as fast of as possible? Of course you need a breather, but – But do you want same. a longer breather no, than like no. two minutes? I feel like – I would – I feel like – Yeah, I mean, a good five, ten minutes – Plenty. 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 Like real minutes. I'm talking about not like, like game, not game minutes. minutes. I'm talking like real, real minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Which is pretty standard. I mean, I would never just sit there. I couldn't just sit there. I would get – I can't just sit there. You sit there for five minutes or three minutes or whatever that looks like. And it depends if you're changing the whole scheme or they're drawing on the, the – whatever the whiteboard or, or you know, whatever yeah. that looks like. But – as soon as they walk away, I'm up. I'm not just sitting there. So, talk about momentum. With basketball, you'll have uh, the other team just will score like eight points in a row. Got to call timeout. Got to call timeout. 20, 20 second timeout. Just to change kill, the momentum. Kill the momentum. Yeah. With football, I don't think that's, that's more game management. You're usually saving your timeouts for that. But do TV timeouts and two minute warnings they suck? Can that throw off the momentum as well? Because they kind of get thrown in the middle when you're kind of least I don't expecting. Say it. Say that it like you start to see like the guys that are your TV, your TV guys. They wear like orange sleeves from like their wrist all the way up their whole arm, and so they'll like hold up two arms. And so you, they're like, okay, it's two minute commercial or whatever, right? And then, you know, they'll once they drop or whatever, it's like you know that the refs are going to be ready to go, like this and that. And so, I don't want to. I think you just get used to it. But there's times where there's delays, and you're like, come on, where it, where if it's not a nationally televised game, yeah, if it's not a nationally televised game, like you'll still have some commercial timeouts or this and that, but it's not like. You're like kicking dirt, like let's go. You right. Know? There's situations like that for sure, but I don't know. I mean, it just depends on how you're doing as far as losing your momentum. You know, it's got to be. The, I mean, a little different from when you played to now because now they've got uh, people that are they even have challenges now. Okay, right. we're gonna challenge last call, the last play. Well, I'm sure, the game. I mean, what we see on TV compared right. to the guys that are standing on the field, a right. lot slower than. It's got to feel like it's like on the field, guys. On the field, slow. it's gonna be like, dude, like that felt like three minutes went by. Mm-hmm. Here we've had commercials. We gotta go to the bathroom. We got another beer. We're right. coming back. Like we're still doing stuff. Right. They're waiting to see what this call is gonna be. Right. I mean, we've been in the stands. I mean, you, you know how it is when you're watching the game. You're kind of. The same way as those players are, in a sense, where you're kind of you don't have commercials to look at. You know, you could go to the bathroom real quick, but other than that, you're like 
kind of waiting too. Um, and it can zap. It can even zap kind of the mood. So how much do you guys rely on that uh, DJ, the PA guy, playing the music, playing the just kind of, okay, we're back from timeout. Boom, That's boom, the boom, thing. Boom, I was boom, just boom, talking boom. to uh, the equipment guy for the Seahawks the other day. Yeah. And he's like, dude, because remember that game where the Seahawks came back and barely won it like last week? Every friggin' week, no, yeah. last week, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. He was like, I don't know, bro. He's like, it's crazy. There's no – like because we hear – Right. Fan noise yeah. on the TV. Right, they don't hear that in the stadium. None at all. That he's saying no, and I've, obviously I don't know. Wow. I haven't been there. He's saying they're not hearing that, and he goes, and the PA guy played some bullshit, like slower stuff, like this and that. And he was like, we couldn't get rolling. He was like, it was brutal, dude, to see the that was players. A home game, right? To see the players, it was brutal. It was like slower music like nobody could pick it up like it was weird like and you don't got fans like you can't like right think of like what the 12s do or like when you run out of right. a tunnel or right anything like that boom boom yeah you know like band the, playing right like everything right all the elements of that are gone so now you got to get hyped and stay hyped on some dude in a booth playing freaking tlc <laughs> or whatever the hell he's playing <laughs> They need DJ Mike Check out there ba- dropping some bangers. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that is what I'm saying. Wow. So he was like, it took a long time for them to get rolling. Wow. And so so you're used to feeding off that outside energy. Outside. That's the whole that's half the fun of it is running out of a tunnel and hearing seventy thousand scream for you. Yeah. Or like your team or like whatever, and knowing that they got your back too. You don't want to let them down. Like not to mention all the people on TV, right? Right. So to to not have that, I couldn't imagine that. It's a that's a whole different animal that I wouldn't know what to do with. So when I when I played high school like basketball and stuff, I quit when I was a junior, you know. We're not gonna get into that, but <laughs> no shit. I hated crowds <laughs> like i'm like i want to play in an empty just an empty court is it because they gave you the medium outfit <laughs> <laughs> no you were clearly a large because they gave me the jitters you get a freaking free throw and like everyone's eyes are on you you're you, everyone's watching your shot Hold like on, trev that is what makes sports sports Think about this for a second. I, I thought, Think about this for a I'm second. Not a pressure guy. What what <laughs> sets you apart from the other dude? Like if you could stand on the line and shoot some baskets with dudes behind the basket doing whatever, or people heckling you in the crowd or whatever. That's right. what that's what sports are about. Yeah, that's the pressure. Being able to perform under pressure. <laughs> no. You don't like that, huh? I like it. I can handle it. Talking, I can handle it. No. You know, Telling jokes and doing a podcast, live podcast. I can handle it there. It it's a rush. It is a rush. I'm confident in it though. When and even if I suck, I'm still confident in it. Uh, but when it comes to sports, dude, it's just like having a, a, a people show up behind you when you're golfing. People show up behind you when you're golfing, and they're gonna watch you hit the tee, and you're like, "Oh crap, I'm gonna drive right now." and with all these guys and you know, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I like pressure. Under pressure, I perform better under pressure. Do you? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. See. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so who's your second uh, WWF wrestler? <laughs> 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 just totally forgot just, about that one. Just a full on like Hulk, Hulk half <laughs> Hulk Hogan. Yeah, Hulk Hogan. I'm gonna say uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm gonna go Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant. I like that. I like Ric Flair. Ric Flair with the woo woo. And uh, yeah, I I was a big. Uh, I'm gonna go Macho Man. Uh, yes, Macho There's Man. My four. Grew, Macho There's Man. My four, bro. Macho Man. What? Macho Man. Randy Savage could have showed up to Selleck and they'd be like. Dad? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, every, Let me tell you something, brother. Dude, everybody who was on cocaine just cracked out. They had the shades on always. You know, the big you old full shades. Oakley's? Just inside. Hey, Dad's here. <laughs> <laughs> this is that voice. Yeah. It's just like, oh, man, this is this guy is my neighbor. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so anyway. I know I'm missing a few, but. 
I'll think about it. Yeah. I'll yeah. do some research. Doink the clown. I'll do some research. With some research. Some research. Lex Luger, Mr. Perfect, uh, Hacksaw, like Jim Duggan. Uh, yeah, we got too much uh, Jake the Snake. Ooh, we, you ever watch a documentary on Jake the Snake? No. Really? It's on, I think it's on Netflix. Or maybe they did a 30 for 30 on it. It's legit. Is it? It's cool. It's a good one to watch. Like he talks about how when he was in the mix, like he started out as like a referee type of deal in the, like in the world of wrestling. Yeah. And like he kind of came up with his family and this and that. And uh, he was like, one of my jobs was to drive the wrestlers from different places. So he was like, one time I was driving um, Andre the Giant and I had like a van. They put me in a van and he was just sitting in like a beanbag in the back of the van. And I was driving, and this dude's like Jake the Snake's raging alcoholic, like yeah. was. Yeah. Maybe he was on uh, Rogan. Check it out. I think okay. he was on Rogan. Okay. But uh, he uh, he's like, onto the Giants, like, uh, stop and get some beer. And so he's like, okay. I'm like, what do you want? And he's like, three cases. And they were like on a four-hour, six-hour drive or something. So we got like three cases of beer. He said the dude drank every single beer. So 60-some right. beers or whatever that was. Didn't piss once in six hours. Got him there. And he was like, dude was a freak. And then like went to the bar and like was fine. Like the guy was like enormous. He was enormous. Though, right? They have a picture of a regular beer can, beer can in Andre the Giant's hand. It looks like those mini treetop. Travel cans? It looks like those mini treetop like little cans. Like yours, it, you're not Andre the Giant. But no. Double up your hand. It's crazy, right? And just imagine as, as you just slug in these treetop little apple tiny juices. Cans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he. Uh, it was a good documentary. You should check it out. Hey, he went to. Uh, there's another wrestler, Diamond Dave. Diamond uh, Douglas. Diamond Dave Douglas. Yeah. So he started like a full rehab deal for like different wrestlers and different things. Come like back that. from just like the craziness of it. Wow. And so you, you should check it out. It's pretty cool. I will. Yeah. Thanks for that's a good recommend. Yeah. It's a good recommend. That's what I do. Everyone, thanks for listening. Any quick shout outs before you go? Uh go Cougs. Go Cougs. Hey, we got some Cougs sto- uh, stuff coming up, dropping Friday mornings. Uh November seventh is the first game. It's November sixth is the first Coog drop. For November sixth is the first Coog drop. Do your homework, guys. And we're gonna have guests. I think we're gonna start lining up some guests. Everyone, thanks so much for your love. And uh Joey, let's talk about those Coog shoots uh, shirts. <laughs> After, uh, you know, off the air. You're a joke.